HHP sells a lot of turbochargers. We carry a number of the industry leading brands for all major OEMs and have helped diagnose a lot of our customers turbo failures as well as providing solutions to get them back on the road. Like a lot of the various diesel engine components we carry, a lot of questions come into our sales department and social media platforms. It's difficult to get to all of them. So today we're answering your turbocharger questions. All right, so question number one. What does the AR number refer to and how does it affect the turbo operation? Uh, the AR describes the geometric characteristics of all compressor and turbine housing. Um, technically, it's defined by the cross-sectional area divided by the radius from the turbo center line. Commonly, we're looking at uh, AR numbers on exhaust housings, and um, if you think about the smaller AR number uh, is going to spool the turbo faster, but it's also going to create some restriction in the exhaust housing. Uh, so if you go from like a 1.32 AR housing to a 1.45, uh, the 1.45 will slow the turbo down just a little bit, but also will allow exhaust gas to escape the uh, exhaust housing easier, uh, potentially lowering exhaust gas temperatures. Uh, why do SDP engine serial numbers use different turbochargers uh, that are harder to source? Um, SDP engines commonly use a uh, Garrett turbo with a ball bearing, um, an, an actual ball bearing in the center section versus a typical standard bushing that most turbochargers use. Uh, they've been uh, proprietary to CAT and uh, sometimes harder to come by. What is the difference between a turbo with or without a wastegate? Can wastegated turbochargers be removed in exchange with non-wastegated turbos and vice versa? Why might a mechanic suggest one or the other? Um, so the, the difference is, is a turbocharger with a wastegate um, is designed to spool up quickly, uh, but you would get into a situation where uh, you, would, uh, you would overspeed that particular turbo if it didn't have the wastegate on it. Uh, the wastegate allows some of the um, exhaust gases in the turbine housing to escape, uh, to go around the turbine wheel, if you will, and keep those, uh, those turbocharger speeds in check. Um, one thing that we do see occasionally is uh, guys with wastegated turbos, vice grips on the, on the hose that go to the wastegate, effectively overriding it, uh, letting that turbo overspeed. Uh, eventually what happens is the compressor wheel blows apart because it's not designed to go that fast. Um, there are typically turbochargers that will work vice versa for each other. Um, one that comes to mind commonly is the 60 series Detroit. A lot of those engines came with a wastegated turbo. Uh, a lot of guys uh, for performance reasons like to go to the non-wastegated turbo. Uh, going from your 172, 743 to the 171, 702. Um, those both fit in the same place. Uh, one's wastegated, one's not. Um, are Cummins ISX the only OEM that uses a variable geometry turbo? No. Uh, there's lots of OEMs that use variable geometry turbos, whether it's Volvo or Mac or Detroit Diesel, or Navistar. Uh, it's getting to the point in, uh, in emissions where uh, variable geometry turbos are needed for, for uh, regeneration type purposes. So um, variable geometry turbos are used in, in many different OEMs. Um, what are the specs on the Big Cat Turbo and what horsepower range is it good for? Uh, the Big Cat Turbo is a non-wastegated uh, 78 millimeter compressor wheel, 1.32 AR housing. That turbo is good from 550 to about 700 horsepower. And it's a very popular turbo for us. If you have any further questions on turbochargers from any major OEM, chat with us on highwayandheavyparts.com. Or you can talk to me or any of the other experts from Highway and Heavy Parts at 844 447-1453. As always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to us on YouTube and Facebook. From diagnosis through delivery, we're Highway and Heavy Parts.